We are understanding so much about the physiology of the body that we are also coming back to the physiology of the soul. Right? We are understanding, we are beginning to understand that pills don't fix mental illness. Pills help. But healing is a journey of the soul. It is a process of personal growth and transformation and change and recovery. And that is what it is about. It is not treating a symptom to make it go away. It is helping people find the tools and the resources and the wherewithal to build a life that has meaning. How radical is that? This brings me back to my advice about staying optimistic. Families for a long time were the missing piece of the puzzle in recovery. Just here in central Pennsylvania. Be an informed consumer. If we don't do that, how are we helping people become citizens in the community? The needs of folks with mental illness are changing rapidly and we better change fast too. I always say, you know, I, I love my job, and uh, people look at me sort of funny, you know, like, and you've been doing it for 25 years, and I say, yeah. But it's, it's uh, movements like the recovery movement to keep me going and uh, uh, inspire me, and uh, uh, it's just so exciting to see a group of staff and family members and consumers here, uh, you know, to gather together to, uh, to talk about recovery. What will the mental health system look like 20 to 30 years from now? Think about that. Ain't one of us all right here. Ain't one of us all wrong here. All right, that we are human beings in a dance together that has steps that we can choose. We are in relationships together. We have a relationship that has a purpose. And we both need to get better clear, more clear on that purpose. And that purpose is recovery. Plain and simple, help into helping individuals with the process of recovery. And many of us who are mental health workers are actually in this field as part of our own recovery journeys. We deal with some of our issues in our lives by understanding psychology and understanding how, how people get better. And how this is not something that is happening and percolating just here in central Pennsylvania, but it is happening and percolating in every county in the state, it is happening in every state in the union, and it is happening internationally. There is a profound and massive movement that is beginning to occur nation around the world. We think we've got the answers. We think that we are on the cutting edge, and we are, and what we are doing is innovative, but we are not at the end point. It is our ethical responsibility, I believe, to negotiate a process and a pathway out. What's it take? If we don't do that, how are we helping people become citizens in the community? There are enormous obstacles to recovery, but the greatest obstacle of all is simply the idea that people can. And we have to go through this whole story again. Be an informed consumer. How much EPA is in is the importance. And you want to get about one to two grams of EPA. Doctors can't tell them they love them. This is our most criti critical role, outwardly loving. We are with them more than any doctor or therapist and should be treated as an ally not someone who is part of the cause of mental illness. I mean no disrespect when I say that. I believe that the doctors do mean well, that their motivations are good, but I also think that we have a responsibility as family members, spouses, to um, love our, our family members in a way that we can outwardly <clears throat> speak that, because doctors and therapists cannot do that. They're not supposed to do that. 
That's a form of enmeshment, I'm told. So we play a very, very important part as family members, and I would encourage everyone to, uh, to think about us as allies. It is because of you that I am where I am today, that I have the faith I have today. My pastor always says there is nothing stronger than the love and prayers of a mother, but I believe that those of a daughter for her mother are just as strong. He had trouble in trusting. It took many years, even after he was out of the home, for him to trust. I never really told Richard the truth as far as his history, where he came from, how we came into his life. He knew that we were not his biological parents, but he didn't fully understand the whole situation. I was honest, I sat down with him and explained the whole thing. And I think from that day on, he learned to trust us as his parents. But he does have more trust in us now when he has problems or needs something, he, he will call us. She mentioned that the car, she couldn't drive the car home. And she asked if I'd come get her. I said, sure, what's wrong with the car? She said, I don't know. Just come get me and we'll talk about it then. And so I said, all right. So I went and I picked her up. And it turned out that uh, she was having anxiety attacks and she couldn't drive. After that, I found an organization called NAMI. I started uh, going to a NAMI support group and got involved in their family to family program back in the late 90s. And I've been doing volunteer work ever since then and educating myself. So I think that families for a long time were the missing piece of the puzzle in recovery. And I think that a strong family, an educated family, can be a tremendous support to their loved ones and can be a support to the professionals in the field and can help recovery find its way sooner. This brings me back to my advice about staying optimistic. You should not see your mental illness as a limitation, but rather, rather as a temporary obstacle that some of us have to overcome. What's important is how we deal with the obstacles and get beyond them. That is what makes us and the human spirit so great, because we all have the opportunity to be great, successful individuals. Anyone can achieve recovery. Sticking with services, taking my medication, and following other techniques I have discussed are what has worked and are still working for me in my recovery today. You will have to find what works for you, and I hope what I said here today has helped either by giving you ideas or inspiration. These past two years, I've watched my children mature, celebrated the birth of my two grandchildren, come back to college, found work that was purposeful, and grown ever closer to my best friend and my husband, Tom. For those who question whether recovery from mental illness is possible, I ask you, what, could any, what more could any one person ask for out of life? This is my journey, and I want to share it with you. I want you to see how lucky we are as providers, as consumers, and as family members to be a part of this community. I would like to thank the CMSU for what they have given me. Um, a lot of friends, um, a lot of acquaintances, and an education that I needed desperately to understand mental illness. And I'd like to thank Mary Lynn for giving me the opportunity to share my story with all of these people. Thank you.